Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Techie Kumar. In this video, we will learn about some additional features of Source Tree. So before moving to the Source Tree, I want to tell you that I have created one application which is uh, going to help us to understand about uh, few operations of Git. So let me give you a basic walkthrough about this application. So I have created a EH cache application. Uh, you know what it does it cache is your result and if you are going to uh, keep calling redundantly it will return the response from the cache instead of hitting the you know uh, or in hitting the service layer again and again so let me just give you a walkthrough so this is the main class i have created a controller inside this controller we have a you know a endpoint a square and we are passing that uh, as a you know field a number it then it calls the service layer you can see here so we have a service layer auto wired here and it calls a square method of service layer inside this method we have created a cacheable uh, configuration we have done the cacheable configuration and what it does when it calls right if it reaches the service layer and if it calls it it prints a square of that value and if the value already exists it won't get into this this service method it will be returned by the proxy method okay which is taken care by the eh cache and you will get the result from the cache we are not going to hit the service layer again and again so let's test this application first and then we'll move, move into git so here i am using insomnia as a rest client maybe in future i'll create a video uh, create a tutorial on this to understand how it works and how we can use this uh, insomnia rest client efficiently so this is the uh, endpoint of this application uh, the port is 8080 and this is the endpoint square and a number so i'm going to call this so just keep an eye on here i'm going let me just clean this okay and let's take another number i'm going to take a number like say 15 so when i call first time you can see that uh, the output is 2 to 5 and here you can say uh, it goes to controller and it also goes to service layer that's why we are getting output a square of this now let me hit this again okay so in this this time you can see right it's 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 not going into uh, service layer because it's not printing this a square of this uh, line right but still it is returning the same output if i try to hit it again multiple times i'll get the same result okay let's try with some other number if i go with 16 okay so this time you can see right a square of 16 is 256 it means first time it goes to service layer for the you know calculation and the next time when you whenever you return or ask for the same thing it re it returns the data from the cache okay so this is about the application very small application uh, and this is the actually real uh, you know implementation of es cache that i have created for learning purpose okay so let's uh, let's move to git so i have uh, i haven't done any change this is the initial commit in the repository uh, i mean you can imagine right in your uh, in your organization you are uh, you are going to start with git uh, and you are going to use source tree so you go and you know just import your uh, code base to the source tree that i have already explained in the uh, you know previous video i'll also mention the link of that video in this uh, you know description sections you can go through this now what we are going to do we are going to do a few changes and pushing them to code base repository so let's just start this is the source tree right and now we have intellij here okay so what change we are going to do so we have a condition we are going to cache values when the numbers are greater than 10 so first let's try with uh, values less than 10 so i'm going with i'm going to find the square of 8 you can see it goes to controller then it goes to service layer i'm going to hit it again okay so i you can see that this time again it goes to controller and then then to the service layer it means that values less than 10 is not being cached 
so that's the reason we are hitting the service layer again and again and if we are going with uh, you know let's say 21 value is greater than 10 right and if i try again again so you can see that it goes first time to the service layer and then it never goes to service layer so now on that note what we'll do we'll do some change we change the requirement we'll make that you know if the value is greater than 5 so this is the change i have done in my code base i'll go to source tree i'll go to file status so when i go here i can see like what are the changes i have done okay so these things are like in a part of the git ignore so you can just mention that you know like okay so now we have these many changes whatever the changes we want to post to server so as of now we are not going to push these many things we are going to push only the changes that is required so this is the change i have updated the value from 10 to 5 so first you do unstaged and then you go for the stage so this is the stage section this is unstaged section okay now this is the file uh, and any modification in this file is going to be committed and post to this repository so now the next action is to we have to pass the commit message so there are two ways to uh, commit and push first you commit let me show you commit so commit is done if i go to file history file status you can see that there is nothing is staged and we don't have a, the, that file here now if you can see one uh, notification here it says like you know one commit is need to be pushed to server so you, you can just click here it is going to from local branch to remote branch suppose if you want to push that this data to some other branch so you can select those branches from here okay now you just click ok that's done so the commit task is done let's go to server now if i refresh and you know let me go here again and we can go to commits so you can you can see that right the recent commit if you click here you can see the change as well so this is how it looks okay so this is for commit now what's next <clears throat> so we learned about commit and push we will do so few more commits and then i will uh, let you know about another feature okay we'll do some changes we'll add some few more values controller just to know from where it is being called okay we'll save this In here we'll make this service okay we'll restart the application so now the cache has been cleared now if I try for the same thing first time so it will hit controller and the service as well next time call it calls only controller so this is the second change what i have done i'm going to do the commit this change and push it to the server so let's go to file status so we'll select java files uh, uncheck this before pushing the data to the server we should make sure that we are pushing only our changes not others changes so you should come to this section and you need to verify what are the changes you have done is there any any commit or any uh, any change you are you know which is unnecessary change that is going to be to your code base for example you can see that this ide has modified many files or created new files as well but i'm not interested in those files and those files should not go to the repository so please keep that in mind 
so i have verified it looks good now i'm going to do another you know commit so this time i'll tell you how to do commit and push all together so i'll go to history i'll go to here commit messages and put a proper commit now click here and this time it will commit and it will push immediately to your main branch let's go to the server and refresh this go back refresh this commit list so we can see right there is one another commit so we learned about two ways to commit this first commit and then push second commit and push all together the next operation we are going to see about fetch so fetch is like you know git fetch so if we want to fetch all the changes what's being done in the repository we can click here and click ok so it will try to fetch is if there is any change in the server so let's consider some another uh, user or another developer is working on this file and he is modifying the code uh, and pushing the code right so i'm just trying to simulate that condition here so i'm not going to open another id and uh, uh, you know work as a different developer but what i'm going to do i'm going to modify the code from here itself so you consider this as uh, another developer so i'll open this file and i'll edit it here So let's go to search. So inside the main class, I'll do the change. So now I'm going to commit this code. okay commit Done. so if we go to commit section here let me go to code and if i go to commits i can see four commits but in my the last commit was done by some other developer just consider it so if i'm going to you know uh, going to show tree in the history we can see that we have only three commits it means that Meanwhile, I was working on some change. Someone has updated the code base by adding new functionality or some few new changes. So what we need to push that change to our local our local you know code base repository, and then I'll, I'll I need to do the development on top of that. So I'll do the fetch. What it does, it fetches the you know changes done on the uh, code base, but it it won't apply. Okay. So it fetches the you know uh, uh, changes and it notifies you that you have a one commit which has which is not yet in your local repository. So what we should do, you can see it's clearly mentioned one behind. It means that you have one you you don't have one commit that need to be here in your code base to you know proceed with development on top of that. So let's uh, pull that. So to fetch that, uh, to pull that information, we can go with pull, commit, sorry, okay. Now we are good. So now my local code base and the remote, I mean the repository server, both are at the same level. Okay. Now, so that's all about for this video. In the next video, we will discuss about how to test your application on different commit levels using source tree it will help you to identify at to which com until which commit your application was working fine and which commit has broken your application so we'll see that in the next video thank you so much for watching this and if you like it please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you so much